Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another Inside Lowell podcast, my big fat Lowell podcast. I am your host, Teddy Panos, here in the WellPoint studios. Unicare is now WellPoint, new name, same commitment to Massachusetts and to its members. At WellPoint, your whole health is their whole point. And we thank our friends at WellPoint for helping to make this podcast possible, all of our Inside Low podcasts possible. And I want to thank all of our podcast sponsors as well, starting with our friends at the Washington Savings Bank. Make the switch now to Washington Savings Bank. TMI Properties, from affordable to luxurious apartments for all. Boston North Company, business solutions for restaurant and retail. We just had their new POS system installed at my family's business. If you're not doing business with Boston North, you're paying too much. Mahoney Oil, providing warmth and protection to Greater Lowell since 1925. Francis E. Preventure Insurance, the agency Greater Lowell has trusted for over 41 years. And last but not least, our friends at the Massachusetts Pirates, bringing all the hard-hitting action and excitement of arena football to the Songus Center in downtown Lowell, as they did last night when they clinched a playoff berth. So congratulations to the Massachusetts Pirates. Congratulations to my special guest in here, (laughs) uh, the the Nostradamus of, uh, I thought you were the Nostradamus of Lowell politics. You may be the Nostradamus of national politics. (laughs) Former Lowell City Councilor Marty Laurie is here with me. Good morning, Marty. How are you? Good morning, Teddy. Oh, it was fun. I um, no, it's been a busy couple of uh, days uh, since the debate. was last July we actually started talking, and I was looking at the election coming forward. You have the primaries coming up, the preliminaries. And um, Biden at that time I thought was faltering. And I said, well, you know, he got it in 2020. They they derailed um, Bernie Sanders for the second time. And they put him in his, I thought it was a stopgap. I said, maybe it's a stopgap to bring someone else in. And... Um, I said he'll never, and I thought the, of the politics behind it, and I said, well, you let him run. Let him take the beatings. Let him go through the states, take the beatings. <laughs> and when you get to Chicago, he'll say, I, I, I won't accept the nomination. And um, that only gives Republicans three months to respond. And to me, uh, the most logical candidate was Michelle Obama. Uh, because when you look at who ran in 2020, no one had over, what, 3%? Mayor Pete, Amy Gobachar. There was no one in the Democratic field of about 20 that anyone was interested in. And Michelle Obama is first lady. She's very smart, elegant, very, very good. Um, and they're in Chicago, which is their home. Basically, her husband represented Illinois for in the Senate. I said, boy, that would be a huge, huge win. (laughs) And um, she's the one person I think that could be Trump in the Democratic field. So you, why I had you come on is because I thought of you at about 1045 last Thursday night (laughs) when I realized that CNN and every other left, left media entity was paving the groundwork to take the sitting United States president and, you, and vice president off of the Democratic tickets. And I said, yeah. damn, Marty Laurie said that to me and to anyone who would listen over a year ago. And then I watched it unfold right before my very eyes. And now everyone is talking. It's the, it's the big national political debate. Yeah. And it does have a Lowell connection as well that I, I do want to get into here because after all, Everything comes, it comes back, back to Lowell. But um, so y- you can kind of see it now, the debate uh, within the Democratic Party, the whispers that are being leaked to the media, et cetera. We got to get President Biden off this ticket. He's yeah. not up to the task. He can't beat Donald Trump. The polls had started to move south before the debate. Interesting, we haven't seen any polls post-debate, right? We're five days. We're recording this on Tuesday, July 2nd. Five days post-debate. You usually start to get polling the day or the second day after a poll. You haven't seen one yet, have you? I I saw some in the paper today, uh, Republican polls that say Trump picked up four or five points. You know, and that's another reason why I think they want to make the switch. The economy's horrible. The border is horrible. There's so many issues in this country, inflation, yet they're still in the race. They can win this, you know. I, I think if they looked at the election and said, listen, 
we can't win, let them run more time, and we rebuild for four years. But they're in the race. They can still win this. And um, so I think they'll move to, to win it. All right. So you said they want to make the switch. And I agree with you. Oh, yeah. There's oh, some absolutely. folks still fighting to keep President Biden on the ballot, particularly uh, Dr. Jill Biden. Thankfully, <laughs> she, thankfully, she's not a doctor who treats Alzheimer's patients, or else she'd probably be up. We on heard that with Nancy Reagan, though, but, late in Reagan's term, you right. know. But they they want to do it. Yeah. Will they do it though? That's yeah. that's the million dollar question. You you still think that they're going to do it. I know they're going to try. I, I I guarantee you they're trying as is. They, they they showed you they were trying by scheduling a debate on June 27th, the earliest it's ever been done in the history of presidential mm -hmm. elections. I, I thought, I'm like, they're setting Trump up for something. Oh, no, 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 no. They set, up, the other way they set up the president. That was the beginning of the plan. And they had their talking points out, not post-debate. There was a New York Times article that was written and actually even published. It was sent to me at 10.43 p.m., <laughs> right? It, and that means it was sent as a link yeah. by a friend at 10.43, which means the Times had written it and published it, put it on their website long before that. So you still think that they will, that they, uh, they're they not going to yeah. outweigh the pros and cons of this? I think to save the party itself, they have to keep moving. Um, it's interesting you brought up CNN I was surprised. I think they had a role in this. Um, again, these are early debates, never done. The Presidential Commission on Debates wasn't involved. And, you know, the post-debate was the CNN uh, liberal commentators will take care of Biden. I think the New York Times or one of the New York papers had 12 fact-checkers ready to, to look at Trump. And then as it unfolded, it, just the cameras, watching the cameras stay on Biden when he looked lost. I said, you know, they're involved well, in this. Well, you know, the, you saw the theme, the narrative, Trump lies, 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 lies. Of course, they forget the fact that Biden said he was endorsed by the Border Patrol during and that debate, didn't. which the Border Patrol fact-checked during the debate. He also said no servicemen and women have died under his watch, conveniently right. forgetting the 13 men and women in Afghanistan and the three that died in Lebanon, oh, a month or so ago. Right. But he's forgetful, so I can forgive the, uh, the leader of the free world. But the narrative was there. They all lie. They get it. But they, you saw it play. His performance was so bad, though, <laughs> that they couldn't hide it. And yet... Now, in the coming days, here's the new narrative that I, that has me thinking, well, he may just hang on. It's don't let a 90-minute debate erase the three and a half years of great government. Kamala Harris, the vice president, was the first one to fight back debate night with Anderson Cooper, much to Anderson Cooper's, Cooper's chagrin. But she used that. And now even Dr. Jill Biden, who I understand can't stand <laughs> The vice president is using the exact same line in, in article after article. Yeah, you're going to fight for him. He is the leader of your party. <clears throat> but ultimately, think back what I said a few minutes ago. They can still win this election. Biden is sinking quick. I guess he has commercials out today <clears throat> trying to put a spin on the election. Uh, they were trying to put a spin on the next day. He was using teleprompters, which is fine. But ultimately, the insiders, the people who derailed Bernie Sanders in 2016 and 2020, knowing he couldn't win, are now sitting in the background. And they're not going to come out in the open, but they're going to move to talk to him. My guess is they already talked to him, and he said no, and that's what well, happened with CNN. Yeah, that's my so guess. They, I, they probably <clears throat> asked him after the midterms. Right. To say, just say you did, you did your job, and you're going to pass it on to the next generation. But, of course, that would have meant that, you know, the, the heir apparent is the vice president. So you're still convinced they're going to do it. I'm 50-50 at this point. Hey, let's say wave off the election. I'm coming around to your way of thinking, but, okay, who do they replace? You, you say Michelle Obama. <laughs> She's the only one that can beat Trump. The only it, one that could be in a race with Trump is Michelle Obama. She doesn't want to do it. I, I, and, and, why, and, why, and why would she? I, I, why, why did they buy a house in Washington? <laughs> Every for, president leaves for, office and goes away. For 2028. I, why would she get into this mess this late in the year, in the process? Why not just wait till 20? Trump's a lame duck anyway. He's out, so you're going to have a completely wide open with race right. with 10 Republicans, 10 Democrats minimum in 2028. Why doesn't she wait till then? What what benefit would be for her to try to do it now and would, and 
could be a losing Her husband's battle. still involved in Washington. They like the Powell. Let, let, let's face it. Are you they, saying he's pulling some strings behind the scenes of, I, the, of the president? That's been known for some time now. <laughs> but um, Marty Laurie, career, lifelong Democrat, saying this, not Teddy Panos, lunatic MAGA person. No, he, he, he's he been, and that's not unusual for past presidents to give advice and things like that. Um, but it was odd that they stayed in Washington when most people don't. And um, they're very young. Why would she stay once she can still win? They can salvage this. Um, what I think the problem with Trump is, you know, we look at his mouth and his attitude. They're afraid of his principles, the conservative principles. He put three conservatives on the Supreme Court. And you look at those de de decisions the past week. Now, my understanding, and I, I love reading about the court, you have to have four votes to move it, uh, something forward. Well, there's only three liberals on there so they have a, they're having a hard time they're still trying to remove thomas they've been doing that since day one alito mm -hmm. um they're talking to sotomayor now to leave just like they did with um chief justice ginsburg get out get out let us make make a pick now while we have the president and the senate she won't do it and i don't blame her you know i don't agree with her but she's a supreme court justice they're terrified he's going to get another pick and um if he it, wins the election he's getting two picks probably. he's going to get thomas and alito because they'll think, go in, in trump's term i think if he wins you're going to see thomas leave obviously i think you might see alito and you might see roberts leave um supreme court justices historically have waited for people in their party to leave uh, to win before they leave and and herein lies the the stuff that starts to become relevant closer to home in Massachusetts, even in Lowell, which we're going to eventually get to. And that's, is this really about the presidency? It, a part of me thinks the Democrats have realized the presidency is lost now at this point. Biden can't do it Biden, to yeah. replace him now. You know, you, you, you're you a fundraising disadvantage unless it's Kamala Harris. And, and we know polling shows her not to be no. very popular either. And, and she's shown herself to not be a good debater. Tulsi Gabbard sh shot her down like a deer in the headlights um, back in 2020. But if they can at least get a candidate who energizes the base, perhaps they save either the Senate or the House. And the Senate is very important because that's who approves Supreme Court justices. So right. if you resign yourself to the fact that Trump's going to win, you need to find a way to block him from having a fourth and fifth Supreme Court appointment. That's it. Forget, forget Republican president. He's already got three. Those are his personal appointments. Right. He's got potentially two more coming. They've got to block that. The only way you do it is by winning the Senate. Right. And, you know, the down ballot's always important. What's important in this race, everyone four years ago, oh, there's going to be a red wave across the country. What people really didn't look at was the Republicans had to protect about 20 seats in the Senate. This time that flips to the Democrats. Mm -hmm. They have to protect those 20 seats. So if the Republicans pick up right now, it's really 48-48 with two independents. So if they pick up three seats, they have the Senate. And, 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 and one take, is basically a log, right? West Virginia, Joe Manchin's out. That's pretty much, I think even the Democrats have given that seat they, they've given to that the Republicans. So right. now you're at 49. You got competitive races in, what is it, Nevada, Arizona. I think Ohio. Um, Ohio and uh, Montana. Montana. Montana's another one that, you know, I mean, you're talking Montana. That's a state with a 20-plus Trump victory. You have an energized Republican base and a kind of defeated Democratic base, and you start to lose Montana, you know, Ohio, all the, all the Pennsylvania, I think, is one. that I think that's what the Democrats are really concerned they about, because they can kind of mitigate the damage as long as they control one of the bodies in Congress. One thing about being a minority in the Senate and the House is you can go to the press and complain. Well, when you're the Senate majority leader or the House majority and you have the White House, you can't really complain. Those are your policies and those are your policies you're backing. But I think the Democrats, where they have to protect those 20 seats, are in trouble in the Senate. Uh, and if Trump wins, I think you might see two, as you said, maybe even three. I think the Supreme Court um, Chief Justice Roberts would like to leave and um, he would get three more picks.
Uh, and that's what they're terrified about. All right, so let's bring it a little bit closer to home. You're watching my Big Fat Lowell podcast coming to you from the WellPoint studios. Thank you to our friends at WellPoint for helping to make this podcast possible, all of our podcasts possible, and that includes Washington Savings Bank, TMI Properties, Boston North Company, Mahoney Oil, France and <clears throat> Prevent Your Insurance, and the Massachusetts Pirates. Marty Lord, former Lowell City Councilor, now political pundit on, I, on the radio. Your first inside Lowell appearance, by the I, way. I would have to thank I have to thank you, Teddy, because when I first took the radio, we were going on. I'd go on with Warren and Jerry, and I was a Democrat. And it wasn't until I came on with you more often than we do Monday with Marty's. I became very open about my decisions. And I have people telling me, we listen to you. We actually listen. And, um, I helped liberate you, can, you, you. The real Marty Lurie yeah, came Yeah, you know, and, you know, I, I'm not afraid to come on and give my views. So this, this last July, talking about Biden giving it up and the reasons why, or he'll take the beating through the primaries, and then he'll get a new norm. You know, people look at you, but this is politics, and this is what they think, especially today. So... Plus, it's so much Thank more you. fun when you know it, that you can piss people off with the things you say. I, it was it was liberating for me back in 2016. I, I didn't. We did the radio yesterday with Jerry. I was on at six, and I some MAGA friends, and we were laughing about the response of the Republicans that oh they, they they'll face anyone. They don't want to face Michelle Obama. So when I bring that name up, they they don't want to talk about it. But when you look at the Democrats. There's no one that can beat DeSantis. There's no one that can beat Nikki Haley. Um, those are the uh, probably two two top uh, contenders, and there's no one that can beat them. But probably Michelle Obama. Newsom's not going to beat either one. Newsom will give you seven states: California, Oregon, Washington, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, New York, and then but, you're on your own. I've seen some things, and this goes back to. You know, months and months ago, when you were one of the few saying it was a possibility that Michelle Obama would step in at the convention, that even internal polling, another reason why she's, you know, going to maybe probably sit it out, in my mind, is there's internal polling that the Democrats have that tells them who can and and can't do oh, it. They do. And you notice, sure they do. you notice who's coming forward. Now, you, you, you know, amazing, the day after the debate, Gavin Newsom had a <clears throat> pre-scheduled thing in uh, New Hampshire. <laughs> Gretchen Whitmer is now suddenly yeah. much of the Michigan governor. She's much more vocal. But let's, we talked about the Senate. We talked about the House. Coming here to Massachusetts, so the, the nine Congress people from Massachusetts, including Congresswoman Lori Trahan, Lowell's representative. Yeah. Uh, she's running unopposed. They, they got nothing to worry about. I don't think the senators have anything to worry about either. Elizabeth Warren is on the ballot. She does yeah. have an opponent, but it's you know here it's July second, and you still I, haven't heard I, from him. I don't. I forget his name, and I've I've been told about him, but he's not out there. He's not going to beat Elizabeth Warren. So no. the Democrats are safe in Massachusetts, New Hampshire. Eh. You know, the I think the, Kelly Ayo the Annie Custer seat is uh, interesting. The yeah. governor's race up there, the mayor's race, and whatnot. There's potential for Nashua to start to get at least purple, where it's it's been blue. They call it a purple state. It's been blue not for for a decade. I, I have the um, <clears throat> Trump rally sign holders schedules, and um, I have a lot of friends up there. But when you go across Southern New Hampshire, even Drake at Tingsboro, you're seeing a lot of Trump signs a ton of Trump signs. So I think that congressional seat can jump and switch. Uh, it's too bad because <clears throat> two years ago, they had a great candidate running, um, Levitt. Now, from what I've read and, you know, you, you hear, she's handling Trump. She's the one that convinced him to be a quieter, more congenial nicer Donald Trump. Uh, uh, and you looked at him. If and, you're seeing it, it's only because he didn't do any debates against the Republicans. I, you know, well, you can say what you want. Ronald Reagan, don't don't talk ill about other Republicans, and he won't help you fundraise. You know, this is the way parties used to operate. And um, But if she did do that, she was a brilliant candidate. Now, you know, if she was running again, it would be a different story. But I think... I think New Hampshire goes Republican in, on in the um, House and in the governor's office. Okay. Do you think they have any chance to take the the, the open Custer seat? I do. With I, an energized, again, energized I think Trump base. Well, what's and gonna, the, the 
potentially depressed or very depressed Democratic base. Well, I think what's going to happen in New Hampshire is the down voting, which the Democrats are fantastic at. But up there, I think Trump will win. I think Kelly Ayotte but, will so you, win. So you say Trump wins New Hampshire? Yeah. Well, that, now that's an interesting pre prediction. I, I do. Why would you vote Biden? If Biden stays in it, here's a guy that took the first in the nation off you and walked out at 11 in the morning to go to South Carolina. And that's something that Republicans and Democrats alike in New Hampshire are united about. And Huge you know, mistake. Even Huge if they mistake. put someone else on the ballot, they're still upset about that. So... You know, you talk about tradition, but Kelly Ayotte's going to pull out a huge vote. Trump will pull out a huge vote, and that's going to help that congressional candidate take that seat. It will be the down-ballot voting. All right. Speaking of down-ballot, here in Massachusetts, this is where I think this whole dynamic that you saw play out as a result of the debate the other night and any effort to remove Joe Biden will play out. Um, if he stays on the ballot, you've probably got a very unenthusiastic base right. that will just go. But then again, why bother going in Massachusetts? He's going to win Massachusetts anyway. The, he's probably going to lose nationwide. We don't have to worry about Elizabeth Warren, blah, blah, blah. Come down ballot now. Um, state Senate, state rep races. In Lowell, mm, again, no. all three Democrats are safe, whoever they turn out to be, because we have a competitive yeah. race in the... In the uh, uh, Ratty Mom District, 18th Ratty District. Mom, I always yeah. forget the districts. Um, State Senate. Uh, you've got a Republican, Carla Miller, some name recognition in Lowell because she ran she against did. Rodney Elliott uh, for that for Tommy Golden's seat back in 2022. She's now challenging Ed Kennedy. New district, Westford and Groton are gone, replaced by Drakeit and where is it? Tingsboro? I'm forgetting which. Tingsboro, I okay. believe, is still in Two it. Two very Trump <laughs> <laughs> communities. Obviously, Lowell is the king. Lowell's going to make up 50% of that electorate. But does Ed Kennedy have to at least, I don't say worry, but does he have to at least get out and make a show and, Eddie, and campaign? Eddie, Eddie has a couple of things in his favor. He pulls in a lot of money in Lowell. They don't want to lose Eddie. Eddie's a nice guy. You know, uh, people like Eddie. He's likable. And he's open. I left a message on his phone a couple of weeks ago. Within 20 minutes, he, he'd call me. People like Eddie, and I think he'll do fine in Drake. It, it's when Eddie leaves, and plus he has Patty Kerwin with him, Kelty. People like Patty Kerwin, Kelty. So, you know, Ed's fine there. Dominic Lay, he's got a pretty good staff. Uh, I think Ed's fine. It's after Ed leaves, that seat's going to be wide open. And I think a, a, a moderate to conservative Democrat will win that seat down the line. You can put whoever you want on the ballot who's a so, progressive. So you think that seat goes more center oh, than yeah. Ed Kennedy? Because Ed, yeah. Ed, surprise, as a city councilor, Ed was about as conservative as you could get. He's, he's governed as a state senator. And I kind of understand why. He's in a complete leftist right. body he's kind of governed as a as a bit of a leftist but you think if when that seat is up for a we break it in, in yeah we break it in yeah you think a you'll, centrist you'll see more center okay. over there is still a big voting block um but i, I think they're going to move a lot more center you might see someone from drake at run um i'm trying to think who would run out of lowell who would be that center you know, um, I'm hearing progressives giving me names that they'll take that seat. You don't have a chance. Well, right Dave Nangle almost ran for state rep. Would he consider a run for state senate? You'd have to ask Dave, but he'd win. Dave, Na you, you, Dave Nangle would win that state senate. Absolutely, seat, out, without what, a doubt. What mind. makes What makes you say that? He's very strong in Drake, and he's still very strong in Belvedere. Dave has a lot of friends. That's you an know, interesting he, name. Would, would, so you're almost saying he might have a better chance of winning a state senate district. No, I think than, it, than uh, the state rep race. No, he had that in state rep years? race for years, and he still has a lot of friends. People like Dave, you know, was unfortunate what happened. Dave has an addiction, and if Dave um, was on drugs, you know, people on drugs they go to rehab and they they, they come back. Everyone supporting them, but Dave had a gambling issue. I think if Dave had run, he would have been a, a, a strong candidate. But if if, say, that center seat opens up and Dave says, I'm going to give it another shot, I think Dave wins. I don't think anyone would beat him. Of course, he's very strong and Drake it.
So that's he's as strong in Drake as he was in Lowell. Interesting scenario. You know, I I've learned not to discount when you make a prediction because damn it, they, they seem I talked to, to people in the coffee they shop. They seem to come true. Yeah. Um, so in Lowell, no big difference. I, I'm kind of looking in the surrounding community. I think Chelmsford, nothing changes. Drake, and I don't even think Colleen Gary has an opponent this time. No, so she not, nothing changes. I'm there surprised I'm because concerned. the Democrats threw someone out of a couple of years yeah. ago. And but again, that's Drake. It you know you look at Colleen's voting record, and she, she's a, a, a moderate to conservative oh, Democrat. Oh well, yeah, she's and an old she's school pro -life. Democrat. Yep. And um, she wins out there. That's why I'm saying with Drake it now in this district, it's it's completely different. It puts you back in a moderate to con. Um, no, I wouldn't say conservative, but at least a good moderate. Is Colleen Gary a potential name if and when Ed Kennedy decides? If not she to runs, run? she always is. Yeah. I'd heard the I'd heard the rumors back in when Eileen Donahue stepped on in that 20, uh, 2018 race. Yeah, um, that you know that her name was thrown in there. It was also thrown into the congressional race. I mean, I spoke to her, and there was interest in the congressional race. But then you know she saw what how that field developed right. and and stayed where well, it was. Colleen Gary is, is is a great state rep, and she has a lot of support. And um, I think she'd have a lot of support in Lowell. Um, the the pro um, the pro um, life people love her, but in this state that that that's a tough. But she she, I I think she's great. I I think she's one of the best state reps state reps I've ever seen. All right. What I'm going to be watching for on uh, that first Tuesday in November, November fifth, obviously the national races. But I there's a dynamic that's been going on in Massachusetts for about a year now. Um, it even started before the the migrant issue overwhelming our state resources really became public in August and September. Um, there were a couple of special elections, and I forget the districts. I think one was in Central Mass. There was a couple of others where there were special elections. Yep. One, I think, yeah. was Senate. One was House. Yep. Republican candidates won both of them. Yes, they Flipped did. both of them. Um, their numbers are still so minuscule as to not matter. They flip a couple more this time. Maybe another couple in 2026 when the governor's race is up. Now you get a Republican governor, uh, if you get a Republican governor. Now you may have enough votes to hold a veto. You know, which you had, which Bill Weld had for a very small period right. when he won in 1990. He had enough Senate seats to over uh, to uh, to hold a veto to keep it from being overridden. Charlie Baker never had that in his time so he kind of, i think that kind of affected the way he governed but you can see it moving and some of these issues you know adus uh you know right to shelter and the, and the influx of migrants that have resulted about it you know some of these gun issues i think are starting to work against the democratic party you know not cracking down on crime go going soft on crime but going hard after legal gun owners i'm, I'm starting to see a little movement not enough to flip the state but enough to Make a difference. Yeah, the gun owners are their biggest problem. This, I was reading in the paper, there's about just under 700,000 gun owners. They're, they're not active. They have the NRA. In this state, you have um, Gold, Gun Owners Action League. 700,000 gun owners in Massachusetts? Yeah, just under. That's a lot. Well, how many people live here? How many millions? Uh, so but they're not active. Six or eight they, they in don't Massachusetts? Vote. They don't vote. That's that's more than I thought. That's about fifteen percent. Yeah, of the I think population. the numbers I saw. You, you figure that some of them are kids, so now your now your popul your percentage is increasing. No, significantly I think the, the numbers well. I saw in the papers were about six hundred and eighty thousand. Um, yeah, that's that. Wow. Those are, but they're not active. And um, Gun Owners Action League of Massachusetts, I think, have thirty five thousand members. So. They kind of, you know, I think the, the Democrats just blow them off where they're, they're not a threat because they're not going to vote. And once they become a voting block, I mean, let's take the veterans. Um, we used to have uh, all these veteran halls in the city, uh, veterans um, in the parades. The number of veterans have now diminished. There was a House bill um, that went through the House to give them priority over housing. The Democrats voted against it. I mean, it didn't bother them in the least. Yeah, I heard the yeah. Democrats, uh, well, believe me. It, well, they eliminated the draft in what, 73, yeah. 74? So, I mean, it's natural that you're not going to have a lot of veterans. And a, a lot of the military comes from the South anyway, so you're... And, you know, I heard the Democrats, well, the, the, the Republicans threw a, an amendment in there and, and put the veterans in. Well, yeah, they did. Probably one of the veteran groups said, hey, we're being shut out. We, uh, 
and they put an amendment in for them. The, the, the thing is, the Democrats just didn't support it. And I don't know if that hurts them, but I think you have a new Republican director in the state. I think she's working hard. I think if the Republicans had let Charlie Baker uh, left him alone and he, he ran again, you would have a stronger party and you wouldn't have some of these issues now that you see in the state. I read in the paper this morning, um, someone from the House and one of the senators, maybe from finance, uh, both questioned Mara Healy, how much are you spending on, on the migrants? They want it, they want the price tag. So it's over a billion dollars. They've, they've already admitted to like 800 million, right? right. You know it's over a billion and will be by the time we're done. You know, and, and here's the other issue. If you're a Republican or if you're a moderate Democrat, you're going to run on. You know, they, um, they're weak on crime. They've closed Cedar Junction. They, they, I think they're closing Concord. They've closed a, a number of the uh, smaller prisons. So where they put in these people? It's always guns. If You know, I saw the column last week, and there was an unfortunate shooting in Lowell, and the district attorney came out, you know, guns, guns, guns. And the Lowell son, the writer in the column. What about the person who pulled the trigger? Who you know? had been arrested for a gun crime a year previously. <laughs> yeah. And was still roaming the streets. And right? where are they going to put them? You know, and years ago, it's, there's so much special interest in this country, Teddy. Um, Trump was president, and they were separating families at the border. The screams, the, the, oh, look what he's doing. He's breaking apart the families. Now, I talked to a couple of attorneys who work in, and they said, well, they, what they do is they separate them to make sure they're really families and not sneaking people in, um, human trafficking. I mean, these are the answers I'm getting, that they, now they're putting the migrants in Cedar Junction and, oh, we'll take the Bob Why? where's the screams? They're Where? in cages, yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, can, can you just please clarify for somebody who's, you know, watching this and thinks, oh, there goes Teddy getting another MAGA Republican on his I'm show. Not every How long were you a member of the Democratic Party activist who went out, knocked doors, campaigned on behalf of a candidate, oh, really? you, including going to New Hampshire to campaign for Probably candidates, Probably right? 2006 or 2005, maybe even earlier, up till when I retired, 2011. Once I was no longer involved uh, in legislative work, I kind of stepped back. You know, I was on the council and things like but that. But you've been a registered Democrat, right? In Most the past, yeah. yeah. No, I'm an independent. Yeah. I am um, like many. And they, they, they tell me, oh, you know, you left the party and you're one of those people. If I didn't leave the party, the party left me. Well, why don't you get the people leaving in droves? You know, it's like the... It, it's awful. So and you're not a MAGA Republican, just to be. So. I'm a moderate. I I'm not a MAGA Republican. <laughs> I'm I'm not a fan of Donald Trump. I think he's disgusting, but I think he ran the country better than Biden did. I, let, let's face it. I, I mean, <laughs> I, there, there, there I'm not all happy. your friends. And there I'll, you go, all your former friends in the Democratic oh, they, Party. They, they, when I sit on the radio, I, I'd vote for Donald Trump. Oh man, I couldn't believe you said that. But well. Don't call me. I mean, well, what, what do you want me to say? Right. If this is what you're going to support in the White House, you know? Oh, please. If I had a dollar for everyone who said they'd never vote for him and then went behind that curtain and did I'll tell in 2016 you, and 2020, I'm, I'd be wealthy. I'm talking to more people, just general conversations involved in labor, elected officials who are Democrats, lifelong Democrats who are going to vote Donald Trump. I, I think you are correct. I want to end it by another national issue you we, you you actually addressed the uh, supreme court decisions there were a number in the last oh weekend. yeah i think folks don't sleep on that chevron oh that's decision huge. and what that means for regulatory agencies who are going to or who have in the past put down some what i'll call i'll tell you dictatorial edicts you saw it during covid trampling on the constitution with unelected because unelected bureaucrats said it rather than having the vote of the people the will of the people decide that chevron decision is huge and it's huge for the long-term climate emergency which i guarantee you is coming i told you i told you that back in 2020 covid was yeah. the covid was the uh, preseason game for the climate state of emergency mark my words it's coming but supreme court made a decision that directly impacts local and that is a, uh, a ruling on whether states, cities, uh, in, and I think this stemmed from Portland, Oregon, if I'm not mistaken, or somewhere in Oregon. Yeah, uh, was out there. Their ability to ban camping 
camping, in other words, homeless encampments on city streets, sidewalks, public ways, parks, whatever. If you recall, uh, I think it was City Councilor Corey Robinson filed a motion to, to look into that here in Lowell. I know he was celebrating when that ruling came down. He actually sent me a text of the ruling, which I'd already seen. Um, that gives Lowell the green light to provided certain things are in place, because no Supreme Court decision is absolute. Right. There's always qualifiers. But, you know, if if Lowell can demonstrate that they have options available, they can tell people, no, no, you're not laying out at South Common you know, well, all day, all night. You're not camping out on your sidewalks. You're not camping out anywhere. That's huge for Lowell's ability to be able to kind of govern itself and not be overrun by communities of people who need different help, not a tent in a park. Right. I think, well, I think a couple of things. One, the Supreme Court says they can charge them. I don't think cities and towns will. I think I think what the states have to do is start spending more money on mental health. I think the government. I, I was reading, I was listening last week or reading this new billionaire tax. The, bill, uh, the, the millionaires are leaving the state in droves. And now businesses are leaving. But they've got almost a billion dollars. What are they doing with it? What are they doing with the marijuana money? Um, Check the bloated bureaucracies and the pensions that come with them, and I'll gambling. show you what they're doing with it. But you know what? The, the, you have to put the money into mental health. They, they have to start opening hospitals, reopen hospitals, and start treating. Um, it doesn't mean they're going to be charged, but it does help the cities and towns. What's going to be interesting, we've known now for years there's about 26 communities that can send the people to Lowell every night because it was a shelter. How does that affect the city? Can they say, okay, it's shut off, you can't accept anyone? At this point, there's no beds. And how do those communities respond? I think that's going to be interesting. Now, whether that's going to affect it or not, but I think for the cities, the businesses, it's it's really, I think it's a great uh, ruling. There's a, but there's a second leg here, and you you touched on it um, where you said you're not they're not going to throw them in jail. No. Well, no. but see, but see, that's the problem when it comes to addiction. They know they're not going to get thrown in jail. A lot of people, right. I, I look, I saw this. I work with young women in recovery. I, I don't work with them, but I work for a foundation that does help young women in recovery at Megan's house. And one of the main drivers of getting people into addiction, it's very difficult to get people into addiction treatment services. One of the main drivers was the threat of jail time. Right. They Basically, as some judge would say, you're going to Framingham, or you're gonna find yourself a long-term, a real treatment. Thing. Right. And they came and they kicked and screamed often, and many, many didn't. They many just left and went back into the life that they knew, and, and Lord knows what happened. But some used it as an opportunity to turn their life around. Others who didn't want it and were just going through the motions to stay out of jail. You have to were ended up turning their lives around. You have to have that that threat that carrot and you know so you, you can't just open up a house and say well they're all going to go because they're not going to go in there they're going to just keep using drugs in the house with the room over the head there has to be a caveat there you get yourself clean or you're going to end up in prison and if you don't put that out there and that's where the da the da's the, the state legislature the governor's office instead of talking about you know shooting galleries or safe consumption sites why don't you talk about getting these people real help and, and that Ugh, pisses me off to no end. You know, there's a couple of things here. <clears throat> when we talked earlier about the crime in the state and closing prisons, and um, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, and it, don't blame the police. Don't blame the DA's office. Blame your state legislator. When they knock on your door, vote for me. What are you doing with the prisons? What are we doing with these people, okay? It's not the DA. Second, you know, where the rubber hits the road, you have a lot of advocates for the homelessness. Okay, now get them in the room. When we deal with this with the police, with the neighborhood groups, help us sign them up for mass health. Get them health insurance. We have mass health in this state. And get the legislative, get them down in Beacon Hill to spend more money on mental health. You know how long it takes to get a bed. It's almost impossible. Make that process a little easier. So the uh, cities and states. It, 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 by extension, it'll then free up your hospital emergency room. Right. Your hospital, it'll have like a, a kind of a sliding effect on a bunch of issues that are, you know. If you a, remember, let's go state. back to my term on the council. 
I put in a motion to clean up the riverbanks, okay? Very controversial to many people. Um, we worked with some of the nonprofits in the area. Kristen Rossankiewicz was unbelievable. She worked for CGI. Mm -hmm. They were going down, and you know, you got seven days. You get so many days, you got so many days. But they were signing these people up, these, these poor people for, for mass health. Some of them got apartments. We did. It's not like it is now. We had maybe 15 people. So we had apartments. They had apartments they could work with. But sign them up for mass health. But get your, your legislative. Get them down at Beacon Hill to take some of that money from gambling, uh, the millionaire's tax. Open these hospitals. Reopen them. And Marijuana sales. Exactly. <laughs> They've got a million new they revenue got, sources. They get all these sources. Let's put it into, these are your kids. These are your relatives. These are your neighbors. Open these hospitals. Open areas so when they come to uh, someone like you and with Megan's house, you have these facilities available where, okay, now they're on mass health. They can get help. I, I've always thought and I've always saw that was the biggest problem, that gateway into getting them help. This Maybe this will be the spirit to do it, this decision. I think in, in the addiction recovery world, we have actually have made a huge difference. And, you, and you've seen some big national players coming yeah. in and making beds available. But I'll tell you, we have anybody struggling with addiction or you have a loved one, a, a young woman struggling with addiction, we have open beds at Megan's house. But, but it's serious work. They've, you know, that's, Absolutely. You, you're not going to, you, you bring drugs into the house, you're, you're gone. You're not going to endanger the Absolutely. safety of everyone else. I think the mental health is where we need a, a ton exactly. of focus. And by the way, those two, addiction and mental health, they go hand in hand. There is uh, pretty much everybody in addiction has some sort of mental health issue. Absolutely. And mental health is, that's they're, they're self-medicating. And um, as I said, when I put that motion, we had 12 people. 10. I mean, it wasn't like it is today. And um, But we worked with the nonprofits. They signed people up for, for mass health. Um, they signed people up for apartments. They tried to get them some type of help. Uh, right now, the numbers are just crazy. But um, to me, it's 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 an investment in mental health spending across the state. My big fat Lowell podcast, Marty Laurie. We started with a national presidential debate and a, a brewing convention battle. And as always, that we Chevron, connected it and brought it back down to Lowell. That Chevron. That is going to be huge. And, you know, and that fight goes back to Roosevelt when he expanded government. And um, that fight has been going on for years. He, he wanted it so badly. His first four years, he couldn't get any of the New Deal passed through Congress. So they said, we'll do it through the courts. And then over the years, they've started giving the power to agencies, federal agencies. Well, look at Fauci. I mean, look at... And um, but Fauci and the CDC ran the country for a year and a half. Yeah. No and if stands or buts about you it. You talk about pollution. There was a bill in Congress that they were fighting it on air. So if you had pollution in your state and was going to another state. So, you know, these things are going to be coming up. But I, I, I think this court, what it has done, it has pulled back the power of the federal government. Um, they, they're giving it back to Congress. You want to change that Chevron lawn? Take a vote. You want to change abortion in this country? Take a vote. That's all it comes down but to is giving it back to the, the, the not, elected officials. Not just giving it back to Congress. They're giving it to states and they're giving it to municipalities. Absolutely. Like that, you know, overnight camping decision proves. So uh, we'll, we'll see where we go with this. You know, for years I heard, why don't we have abortion and, and, and this and that? And did, you, did they ever take a vote? They never, you know, I wasn't a big fan of Teddy Kennedy. He was way to the left of me, but Teddy Kennedy was pro-life. And then he came out and switched. And Teddy Kennedy was always ready to take that vote on abortion. Many elected officials just won't do it. So I always, you know, people like Kennedy, I give them a lot of credit. All right. And we have people here in low elected officials. They'll take that vote in a heartbeat, you know, to, to protect the Had a right. big rally just the other day. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> but, you know. If I agree with them or not, that's not one thing. It's the, it's their ability to take a vote. If whether it's ADUs, guns, uh, abortion, if they're willing to take that vote, whether I agree with them or not, I have a lot of respect for them. All right, Marty Lloyd, Teddy, Lord, always good to see you. Thank you for joining me here, and of course, thank all of you for joining us as well here at Inside Lowell for our uh, what do we call it? My Big Fat Lowell podcast, as we like to say here at Inside Lowell. If Lowell is your home, this is your place. Till next time, be safe.